Good afternoon. My name is Ed Flynn. I'm the City Council President. Viewers can watch the City Council meeting live on YouTube by visiting boston.gov slash citycouncil-tv. I'd like to ask all my colleagues and those in the audience to please silence your cell phones and electronic devices. I'd like to ask everybody, my colleagues and the audience, to be respectful um, of the meeting. I'd also like to note that according to city council rules, there were no signs allowed in the council chamber. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll to ascertain the presence of a quorum? Councilor Coletta, Councilor Fernandez Anderson, Councilor Flaherty, yeah. Councilor Flynn, here, yeah. Councilor Lara, Councilor Lujan, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Murphy, yeah. and Councilor Worrell. I have been informed by the clerk that a quorum is present. <clears throat> The clerk today will be giving, delivering this week's invocation. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please come to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. If we can all stand. The ringing of a bell calls us to worship. The pounding of a drum calls us to war. The popping of a court calls us to celebration. What is the sound that calls us to hear one another? Listen, listen carefully. It is here in the silence, listen deeply. The beating of our own hearts calls us to ourselves. Call us to be our true selves. Call us to be our best selves. Call us to be what we might become. Listen, there is another sound. The breath of our neighbor's call calls us outside ourselves, call us to be companions, call us to be allies, call us to be partners. Listen, we must heed the call of our own hearts where love and truth, caring and justice are born. Listen, we must heed the call of others to gather together for a great purpose where passion and fidelity, compassion and equity are nourished. The hammering silence calls us together that we may do the work we cannot do alone. Let us heed the call that comes in the silence, that we may be well and do good in this world together. Amen. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Clark. You're welcome. <clears throat> we are honored to have two groups that are with us today. The first group um, is a group of students from the Murphy School in Dorchester. At this time, I'd ask Councilor Baker and Councilor Murphy to please come to the podium and to introduce the students, please. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for your patience. Um, we have members of the Murphy School community here today, and Councillor Baker and I are proud to celebrate all that they're doing. The other night, True Clay, who is their family liaison at the Murphy School, had an evening to celebrate Lunar New Year. Councillor Baker and I sponsored and attended, and it was just an amazing night of celebrating culture, community, and the Murphy School is, as all of you know, is near and dear to my heart. I was honored to teach Councilor Flaherty's, all three children, and Councilor Baker's kids there. I was a kindergarten student there the year it opened, 
It is proudly named after my grandfather, Richard J. Murphy. And um, being a teacher there, I know how important the Vietnamese community is. And I know Councillor Baker has been doing a lot of work with our Vietnamese community, Little Saigon Business District in Fields Corner. And many families feel honored when their students are assigned to the Murphy School. So it was just a wonderful evening. And another thing for me I wanted to highlight, and Councillor Baker and I talked about this, key to school success is family involvement. And years back, the school department created that new job of family liaison. Some schools already did a wonderful job, but there were some schools that needed support. And I just want to not just highlight Truk, she's been an amazing family liaison, making sure that the Vietnamese community is heard, is welcome, and is thriving alongside all of the other students in the neighborhood. But to also uplift Courtney, the principal, and all of the teachers and staff at the Murphy School for doing a wonderful job. So before we give you the citation, if you'd like to add any words, Councilor Baker. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Council Murphy. And I just want to echo the sentiment um, to, to the students. Great job. Thanks for coming in and teaching us about your culture. Uh, those of us that live in Dorchester have lived side by side with the Vietnamese community for, I mean, my whole life. Um, and this is a, just a great way for us to expose you to City Hall. This is, this is where things happen in your city government. And I also have really fond memories of, of the Murphy. My kids went, went there. Of course, Miss Murphy was their kindergarten teacher. They were products of the advanced work class, which um, really made them excellent students. And, and just to kind of uplift the, the Murphy school that with a lot of the stresses and strains that are in every school and in our school district now, there, there is still learning going on in BPS. And I can, I can say at the Murphy, there is definitely learning going on at the Murphy. So, and and uh, Turk, thank you very much for bringing your, 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 your people in today, your, your kids to come and, and um, educate us. So thank you and congratulations. And we do have a citation. So if you'd like to come up to receive it, all the students can come up also. And, and I'd like to ask our city council colleagues Please, to come yes. up for a group photo as well. Sure. So this is an official resolution from Councillor Baker and Councillor Murphy. Be it resolved that the Boston City Council extends its gratitude to Truk Lay and the Murphy School community in recognition and appreciation of the Lunar New Year event at your commitment to bringing the school and beyond together to celebrate the numerous cultures. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful to see you, and I know we'll continue our relationship to keep. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So come on up. Front. I do know um, Councillor Flynn. Earlier, they liked that you had a gavel up there. Yeah, Students, yeah. come on up. Yeah. 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 Where are my short people? Where's Aaron? Where is Aaron? Stand so we can see her. Yes. Where's sure that face child? Aaron. Oh, there we go. That's all. <laughs> we have a second grade. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to say a few words. Uh, my name is Trick Lai, the family liaison at the Murphy School. Um, I really appreciate and um, we are very honored to get this citation. Um, and it's a privilege to work at the Murphy, and it's also a privilege to be able to work for BPS as a family liaison. Um, I think it's a great um, uh, contribution to the families to, because we know that it's very important to have families engage with their students' education. The more involved families are, the more successful the students are. So I really appreciate that. And also, I really want to thank all my students. Without them, we would not have had the success that we did. Um, in addition, I also want to recognize today is February 1st, and it is Black History, the start of Black History Month. And at the Murphy School, we are very culturally diverse and welcoming of every culture. And so at the Murphy School, we will be celebrating Black History Month. We will be reading, teaching, educating, and also celebrating Black History. Um, as we did with Lunar New Year. So thank you, and we really appreciate and are very honored for this citation. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
topics for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We answer my city council colleagues, if you want to stay here, we have another group of students that we want to recognize. Um, the mayor's office was, was working with my office to bring some students from France that are in the audience today. They are hosted by the Boston Latin School. They are part of a student exchange program. I'd like to invite the students to the, to the floor, to the chaperones as well, the teachers. Ask my colleagues to join us um, and take a photo with the visitors. Okay, stay where you're at. We're going to have um, Jocelyn Servo, who is an administrator with the school, uh, will speak, and she'll also have the opportunity to introduce one of the students that would like to um, say hello as well. So let me ask Jocelyn to speak first. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you so much to um, the Boston Latin School and to Boston Public Schools. We are honored to be here. Our students have been having a phenomenal time for the past week here in Boston. Um, discovering not only the amazing school system um, that exists here in Boston um, and the opportunity to have um, Boston students that can speak French, that can interact with us, um, has been a, an amazing experience. Also discovering the sites um, and all that there is to see, the universities, the, um, just the vibrant communities that exist here in Boston has been a phenomenal, phenomenal experience for um, ourselves as chaperones and especially for, for our students for whom it's the first time in the United States for, for many of them and really um, creating connections that will last for a lifetime. Um, I would like to let um, Adele Simlin give, talk a little bit. She's one of our students in the 11th grade. So we're an American section and it is a really great opportunity for us to be here and not just learn in class what America is like but also learn it like really in real life by talking to your uh, pen poles and going to the families and really seeing what it's like to live in the US today and I think it's going to be really um, good for all of us. It's going to develop our knowledge, our culture and it's going to create connection with the US for a long time. So thank you for receiving us. Thank you to the teachers that brought us here and thank you to the school and just everyone that made that trip possible. Thank you, and well, welcome again to Boston. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, guys. 
Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Glad that you guys came by. One, one cookie for Baker, no two, no two cookies for Baker. <laughs> Before we continue, I just wanted to say that it's really an honor to be on the city council, not only representing the residents of the city like we all do, but having the opportunity to meet so many wonderful BPS kids and foreign exchange uh, students as well. So it's really a highlight of the job is meeting so many wonderful people as, as a city council. So I know my colleagues feel the same, same way I do. Okay. Mr. Clerk. To reflect the record, would you ensure that Councillor Baker is marked present, Councillor Coletta is marked present, and Councillor Mejia is present? <clears throat> We're on to the approval of the minutes. <clears throat> Seeing and hearing no discussion at this time, the Chair moves to approve the minutes from the last meeting. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the last meeting say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Thank you. The minutes of the last meeting stand as approved. Communications from Her Honor the Mayor. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0323, please? Docket number 0323, message in order for your approval. A proposed act to improve and modernize planning and community development in the city of Boston. Thank you. This docket 0323 will be referred to the Committee on Government Operations. Mr. Clerk, can you please read the next one, 0324? Docket number 0324, message in order, temporarily extending urban renewal plans in the city of Boston until March 31st, 2025, or passage of a proposed relevant home rule petition. Thank you. This docket 0324 will be referred to the Committee on Planning, <coughs> Development, Transportation. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0325 and 0326, please? Docket number 0325, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $1,722,764.20 in the form of a grant from the local fire department projects and grants line item 8324050 of the fiscal year 23 state budget awarded by the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services to be, to be administered by the fire department. The grant will fund decontamination equipment, vehicle, and maintenance expenses for the hazard response team at the Boston Fire Department. And docket number 0326, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $300,000 in the form of a grant for the local fire department project and grants for the fiscal year 23 state budget, line item 8420050 awarded by Massachusetts Department of Fire Services to be administered by the Boston Fire Department. The grant will fund renovations at Edgen 8, Ladder 1 in the North End to improve the safety, health, and wellness of firefighters. Thank you. These dockets 0325, 0326 will refer to the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice. Mr. Clerk, can you um, ensure the record is reflected that Council were always <coughs> present and Council Fernandez Anderson is present? Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0327 to 0330, please? Docket number 0327, message transmitting certain information under seven, section 17F relative to the Department of Public Works. Docket number 1397, passed by the Council on November 9, 2022. Docket number 0328, message transmitting certain information under Section 17F relative to the BPS transportation. 
Docket number 1421, passed by the Council on November 13th, 2022. Docket number 0329, message transmitting certain information under Section 17F relative to the BPS facilities. Docket number 1396, passed by the Council on November 9th, 2022. And docket number 0330, message transmitting certain information under Section 17F relative to the Mayor's Office of Housing. Docket number 1395, passed by the Council on November 9th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. These dockets, <clears throat> 0328, 0327, 0329, 0330, they'll be placed on file. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 03312, 0332 together? Docket number 0331, notice was received from the mayor of the appointed of uh, Bernadine DeSanges as director of diversity for the city of Boston. And docket number 0332, communication was received from the city clerk of the filing by the Boston Planning and Development Agency of the New Boston Food Market Chapter 121A project, certificate of project termination. Thank you. These dockets 0331, 0332 will be placed on file. We're on to reports of committee. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 01142, 0115 together? Docket number 0114, the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice to which was referred on January 11, 2023. Docket number 0114. Message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $5 million in the form of a grant for the presidentially declared disaster awarded by Federal Emergency Management Agency passed through the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency to be administered by risk management submits a report recommending the order ought to pass. And docket number 0115, the Committee on Public Safety and Criminal Justice to which was referred on January 11th, 2023. Docket number 0115, message in order authorizing the City of Boston to accept and expend the amount of $2,250,000 in the form of a grant for the fiscal year 23 state training grant awarded by the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services to be administered by the Fire Department submits a report recommending that the order ought to pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The Chair recognizes Council of Flaherty, the Chair of the Committee on Public Safety, Criminal Justice. Council of Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. A public hearing is held Thursday, uh, January 26th on dockets 0114 and 0115, both matters uh, sponsored by uh, Mayor Michelle Wu and referred to the committee on January the 11th. Um, first one's uh, Self-explanatory 0114 is a, a $5 million reimbursement, much needed reimbursement for expenses that the city of Boston had to expend related to the uh, blizzard uh, in 2022, and that was uh, January 29th through the 30th, uh, and urging at this time it's chaired for, uh, for passage. And docket 0115, uh, as mentioned, it's a 2.250 uh, uh, million grant to fund equipment, miscellaneous supplies for the Boston Police Fire Department Training Academy, and their tactical rescue division. Uh, both of them are located on Moon Island. Uh, Commissioner Burke was present uh, with his uh, chiefs as well as the administration's budget team. And they informed the committee that uh, some of the training will include uh, fire training, instructor training, functional skill test, EMT training, emergency rescue, and academy activities. An interesting note for those that attended, uh, the commissioner did flag a conundrum that uh, the fire department has been dealing with, as have fire departments across the country, which is uh, with electric vehicles, both uh, uh, motor vehicles and um, bicycles. Uh, catching fire, uh, police are able to sort of uh, put the fire out only to realize that they reignite again. Um, and it's been a situation where uh, apartment buildings have caught fire uh, and or vehicles that have been towed uh, to tow lots have reignited and have lit other cars. So again, these are sort of the very important and critical uh, issues that uh, our fire, uh, fire department faces and that this so the training uh, will go towards uh, those types of things. So uh, as chair moving for a passage today. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Flaherty. Council Flaherty seeks acceptance of the committee report and passage of docket 0114. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Docket 0114 has passed. Council of Flaherty. I seek acceptance of the committee report and passage of docket 0115. All those in favor say aye. 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 
I'll oppose say nay. Docket 0115 is passed. And Mr. Clerk, can we ensure the record is reflected that Council Laura is present? Matters recently heard for possible action. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0100, please? Docket number 0100, message in order for your approval. An ordinance establishing the Office of Participatory Budgeting, amending the City of Boston Code, Chapter 5, with the insertion of a new Section 5-1.11, filed in the City Clerk's Office on December 12, 2022. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Arroyo, the Chair of the Committee on Government Operations. Council Arroyo, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to thank my Council colleagues for attending uh, the hearing on this yesterday. Uh, specifically, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Louis Jen, Council President Flynn, Councilor Lara, Councilor Coletta, Councilor Philandes Anderson, Councilor Flaherty, Councilor Braden, and Councilor Bach. Uh, I'd also like to thank members of the administration for attending James Williamson, who's the Director of the Office of Budget Management for the City of Boston, and Henry Santana, Director of Civic Organizing for the City of Boston. I'd also like to thank the advocates who attended Aaron Tanaka, the Executive Director of the Center for Economic Dis uh, Democracy, Francesco Tena, founder of Pipelines of Power. Uh, Christina De Leon, co-executive director of the Participatory Budgeting Project. Johnny Shivili, uh, master's student of urban environmental policy and planning at Tufts University. Sashi James, the director of reimagining communities for the National Council for Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls and Families for Justice as Healing. Mallory Hanra, executive director of Families for Justice as Healing. Andres Del Castillo, the director of development for City Life Vida Urbana. James Van Boy, Chief of Staff for Community and Culture at the Ujima Project, and Eliza Parad, Director of Municipal Democracy of the Center for Economic Democracy. Uh, this ordinance would establish the Office of Participatory Budgeting, which will include a director and external oversight board made up of residents and leaders from across the city. The office, in partnership uh, with the external oversight board, will establish and manage a participatory budgeting process for residents to engage with the city's annual budget process and make recommendations for projects to include in the budget. Uh, the hearing was an opportunity for my council colleagues to hear from both the administration and advocates on the impact of this ordinance, as well as share recommendations on how we can make this a more equitable process for all of our residents. As chair of government operations, I am recommending, uh, Mr. Chair, that this matter remain in committee. And for my council colleagues, we will be holding a working session on this matter Tuesday, February 7th at 2 p.m. to discuss specific language suggestions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Flynn, uh, Chair Flynn. Thank you, Council Royal. Docket 0100 will remain in committee. Mr. Clerk, can you please read Docket 0111? Docket number 0111, message in order for your approval in order authorizing the City of Boston to appropriate an amount of $21,600,000 for the purpose of paying the cost of design and construction associated with boiler, windows, and door replacement projects at the following schools. Boston Day and Evening Academy, Henderson Upper School, Raphael Hernandez School, and William E. Russell School. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Fernandez Anderson, the Chair of the Committee on Ways and Means. Council Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Yesterday, uh, around 2 p.m., we had a Ways and Means meeting where we heard from Sam DePina, BPS Superintendent of Operations, uh, Brian McLaughlin, BP, BFD Senior Project Manager, Helen um, Kwesnick, PFD Project Manager, and Marquise Mecca, PFD Assistant Director of Construction, about the proposed design and construction associated with various forms of repair and maintenance at a number of schools, including the Boston Day and Evening Academy, Henderson Upper School, Raphael Hernandez School, and William E. Russell School. Uh, the amount of money to be appropriated for this purpose is to be 20 one million dollars, twenty-one million and six hundred thousand dollars. The city of Boston is anticipated reimbursement of uh, twelve point seven million in the form of a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority for these projects through their accelerated repair program. Once this appropriation is approved, the project will be put out to bid in in the fall of twenty twenty-three after the design is completed and construction will begin in summer twenty twenty-four. The approval of this appropriation requires two votes of the City Council so that it is at this time that I recommend 
to the council that this matter ought to be read for the first time and assigned for further action. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Council Fernandez Anderson, the chair of the Committee on Ways and Means, seeks acceptance of the committee report in a first reading for docket 0111. Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? First reading on docket 0111. Councilor Arroyo? Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker? Aye. Councilor Baker, aye. Councilor Bach? Aye. Councilor Bach, aye. Councilor Braden? Aye. Councilor Braden, aye. Councilor Coletta? Yes. Councilor Coletta, yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson? Yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, yes. Councilor Flaherty? Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn? Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Lara? Councilor Lara, yes. Councilor Louis Jen. Yes. Councilor Louis Jen, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy, yes. And Councilor Worrell. Yes. Councilor Worrell, yes. Docket number 0111 has received its first reading. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. This docket um, has received its first reading. It will be assigned for further action. We're on to motions, orders, and resolutions. I guess before we do that, Mr. Clerk, I just wanted to note that there, there are a few in here that are refiles. They already have been discussed last year, so I'd like to respectfully ask my colleagues to consider limiting their time when introducing a refile matter. I also want to note that Rule 39 states that original sponsors have three minutes to speak and other councils have two minutes to speak. The clerk will help me keep the time and let me know when someone reached that time limit. Um, discussion and debate about a particular matter should be addressed at the hearing or working session itself. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0333? Docket number 0333, Councillor Baker offered the following. Petition for a special law relative to an act directing the City of Boston Police Department to waive the maximum age requirement for police officers for Wendy Pierre Luis. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councilor Baker. Councilor Baker, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a refile. We had a clerical error in the uh, original filing. It's the same person, same gentleman. We needed to change basically his name and send it back up to the State Hill. So I, would, I am looking to suspend and pass this. Thank you, Councilor Baker. Is anyone else looking to speak on the matter or add their name? Mr. Clerk, can you add Councilor Arroyo, Councilor Baugh, Councilor Braden, Councilor Fernandez Anderson, Councilor Flaherty, Councilor Lara, Councilor Louis Jean, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Worrell, please add the chair. Councilor Carter? Councilor Carter? Did you want to add your name? Okay, and please add Councilor Coletta. Um, Councilor Baker seeks suspension of the rules and passage of docket 0333. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Councilor Baker, were you looking to do a roll call vote? Sure, yes. Okay. So I doubt the vote. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't see that. Um, okay. Um, per the request of Councilor Louis Jean, can we have a roll call vote? And Councilor Baker, too? Sure. Yeah. Real collaboration, Mr. That, President. That's right. That's how we do things around here, Councilor <clears throat> Baker. Roll call vote on docket number 0333. Uh, Councilor Arroyo? Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker? Aye. Councilor Baker, aye. Councilor Bach? Aye. Councilor Bach, aye. Councilor Braden? Aye. Councilor Braden, aye. Councilor Coletta? Yes. Councilor Coletta, yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson? Yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, yes. Councilor Flaherty? Yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Louis Jean, yes. Council Louis Jean, yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Murphy, yes. Council Murphy, yes. And Council Worrell, yes. Council Worrell, yes. Docket number 0333 has received a unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, this docket has passed. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0334? Docket number 0334, Council Lara offer the following. Order for a hearing regarding winter placemaking in Boston as a winter city. Thank you. The chair recognizes Council Lara. Council Lara, you have the floor. 
Thank you, President Flynn. Last year, while I was on the campaign trail, one of my constituents, uh, Dorothy Fennell, reached out with the idea of activating our parks during the winters and after snowstorms. She had a vision for how we could use the Franklin Park, excuse me, golf course for winter sports uh, in a more intentional and accessible way. And she wanted to show me for herself, so I bundled up. I met her at the golf course and went cross-country skiing for the first time. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how much skiing you could call it because I was on the floor more when I was on the skis, but it did help me see an opportunity um, to really make Boston a winter city, one that has the tools to embrace winter season, create infrastructure for recreation all year long, and bring economic activity back to parks, neighborhoods, streets, and downtowns. So I'm excited to work with my colleagues and the administration to identify winter placemaking opportunities and get Boston one step closer to being a winter city. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lara. Is anyone else looking to speak on this matter? Please, um, please signal. The chair recognizes Councilor Bach. Councilor Bach, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to thank Councilor Lara for filing this. Please add my name. Um, I also had the pleasure of going cross-country skiing with Dorothy um, in Franklin Park because she saw that I cross-country ski in the Boston Common and said, you know, we've got an, an even better cross-country skiing park out here in the center of the city. Um, so I took my skis on uh, two MBTA buses, um, which I think confused a lot of people, and, uh, and um, went skiing with Dorothy and her family um, and totally agree. It's, uh, you know, in the winter, we really have this winter wonderland, and it would be wonderful if um, we could actually, you know, have a whole bunch of skis out there and have our BPS kids like learning. It's like sledding, but faster and more exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I think when you only have to go north of us to Burlington, Montreal, Quebec City to see the real potentials in places that are colder than here um, to have really robust outdoor activity um, during the winter. And it just does have huge, has huge economic benefits, huge community benefits, um, people not kind of being shut up inside. And I think really importantly also um, can be a kind of counterbalance to seasonal effectiveness disorder and that sense of kind of darkness and isolation <coughs> in the dead of winter. So just would love to see us doing this and want to thank Councillor Lara for filing. Thank, thank you, Council Bach. Would anyone else like to speak? Would anyone like to uh, sign on? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, can you please add Council of Royal, Council of Baker, Council of Bach, Council of Braden, Council of Cleta, Council of Fernandez Anderson, Council of Flaherty, Council of Eugen, Council of Mejia, Council of Murphy, Council of Rural, please add the chair. This talk at 0334. We'll be referred to the Committee on Arts, Culture, and Special Events. And I think it's a wonderful um, opportunity. And during the snowstorm several years ago, I saw Councilor Flaherty was cross-country skiing at um, Moakley Park as well. So it's a great opportunity. Um, <laughs> Mr. Clerk, please read docket 0335. Docket number 0335, Council Worrell offered the following. Order for a hearing to bring the 2026 NBA All-Star Weekend to Boston. The Chair recognizes Council Worrell. Council Worrell, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Council President Flynn. I'd like to suspend the rules and add Council President Flynn as original co-sponsor, as well as Council Louis Jen. Seeing and hearing no objection, Councilor Flynn and Councilor Louis Chen are added. The chair recognizes Council Rural. Thank you, Council President Flynn. And as a Boston Celtics fan and Bostonian, I'm all in when it comes to hosting uh, the 80th NBA All Star Game. Um, after all, we are a city that's known to be sports fanatics, the city of champions, and Massachusetts is the birthplace of basketball. And 59 years, I believe, is far too long for one of the most historic storied franchises in the NBA history to not host an NBA All-Star game. I'm looking forward to work, working with the Boston Celtics, the administration, and all stakeholders in creating a winning bid. Um, an analysis, and this is something I'm very excited about, is analysis of the 2022 All-Star game uh, reported uh, $141.4 million in direct spending. Uh, this economic impact is much needed in our downtown area and restaurants throughout the city of Boston. And if and when we do win the bid, um, I will love the opportunity to showcase our entire city and to make sure that business exposure and the stimulus is equitably distributed. Um, this Boston Celtics is not only a successful on the court franchise, but also successful in breaking racial barriers in sports. 
And I think that this is a time that we can use this national stage to showcase the progress that we have made here as a city. city. Um, I'm looking forward to working with the administration on creating a task force to ensure that we are having an eventful, safe, and equitable All-Star Weekend. I'm looking forward to getting the whole city, city support to making sure that this happens. Thank you. Thank you, Council Well, I'm honored to partner with you and join you, Council Well, and thank you for your tremendous leadership on this important issue. The Chair recognizes Council louis Jean. Council louis Jean, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Council Orell, for your leadership here and for adding me. I'm just, just to reiterate what he said, we are a city of champions. I think from 1999, we've celebrated 12 championships here. Uh, so we are the title town, hopefully two more this year with the Celtics and the Bruins. Um, and so it is uh, only right that we all be the 2026 host of the All-Star Game to continue like uh, what uh, Council Orell said a city marketing ourselves as what we are and what we can be, which is a fun city that attracts diverse talent. Um, and I'm excited about this because uh, there are a lot of folks who have been uh, pushing for this to happen. And so for us to do it here on the city council is excited. My 12 year old former uh, ball girl uh, for the Boston Celtics rookie team is really excited about this possibility. So I'm excited to work with you, Councilor Rao, President Flynn and my colleagues and the administration to make this happen. Uh, to get a fun All-Star Weekend in February 2026. Thank you. Thank you, Council Louis-Jean. Would anyone like to, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The chair recognizes Council Bach, then I'll, then I'll go to Council Royal, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'll just be brief and say that as the councilor who's proud to have the TD Garden in my district, I want to strongly endorse this um, and also say that since it's February 2026, by then we can be a winter city um, and, <laughs> and really uh, put everybody to shame both inside uh, the, the, um, the stadium and also outside. So thank you so much. Thank you, Council Bach. The chair recognizes Council Royal. Council Royal, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank uh, Council Morrell for taking initiative on this. Uh, Commissioner Silver is also someone who, Commissioner Silver of the NBA has also sort of recommended and suggested that the Celtics put in a bid, which I think is a good sign, portends good things for the future. And so my hope is that we secure this. Uh, I remember the difference that the uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game here in Boston made for folks. A lot of memories came from that. Uh, I know that it was incredibly important, not just to the city uh, from a sports standpoint, but also from an economic standpoint. Uh, and I remember our ability to host that, uh, I think, was uh, met well. I think our ability as a city to host this uh, is not just, uh, we don't just have the capability to do it, but I think we can do it not just successfully, but we need it. Uh, I think it would be very helpful for our, for our industry here uh, for the time in which the NBA All-Star Game is present. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Royal. Would anyone like to si um, sign on? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council Royal, Council Baker, Council Bar, Council Braden, Council Coletta, Council Fernandez Anderson, Council Flaherty, Council Lara, Council Mejia, Council Murphy. Ms. Dockett, Excuse me. 0335 will be referred to the Committee on Arts, Culture, Special Events. Docket 0336 has been withdrawn. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0337, please? Docket number 0337, Councilor Worrell offered the following. Order for a hearing regarding efforts to increase housing affordability for long-term residents. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Worrell. Council Worrell, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Council President, President Flynn, and I would like to suspend the rules and add Council Fernandez Anderson as an original co-sponsor, please. Council Fernandez Anderson is added. Uh, the chair recognizes Council Worrell. Uh, thank you, President Flynn. And this is just a refile um, on the work that we did with ARPA dollars, um, the amount of money that we were getting, that we were able to secure through ARPA to home ownership for the BHA, um, and just to have a conversation about their progress. Um, since then, they have hired uh, someone who is being focused on home ownership initiatives, and we just want to get an update to see how. Um, uh, those home ownership, home ownership initiatives are, are, are taking place right now. Thank you. Thank you, Council Worrell. Would anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Cora, can you please add Council Arroyo, Council Bar, Council Braden, Council Coletta, Council Flaherty, Council Lara, Council Louis Jean, Council Mejia, Council Murphy? Please add the chair. Council Baker. 
This docket 0337 will be referred to the Committee on Housing and Community Development. Mr. Clerk, please read docket 0338, please. Docket number 0338, Councilor Worrell offer the following. Order for a hearing regarding equity and city contracts. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Worrell. Council Worrell, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President Flynn. I'd like to suspend the rules and also add Councilor Fernandez Anderson as the original co-sponsor. Council Fernandez Anderson is added. The Chair recognizes Council Worrell. Uh, thank you, President Flynn. This is also a refile. Just wanted to get an update from the administration on our equity numbers when it comes to city contracts. Thank you, Council Worrell. Would anyone like to sign on? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council Arroyo, Council Baugh, Council Braden, Council Coletta, Council Flaherty, Council Lara, Council Louisiane, Council Mejia, Council Murphy. Please add the chair. This docket, this docket 0338 will refer to the Committee on Labor, Workforce, Economic Development. We're on to 0339. I'm sorry. The, uh, the chair recognizes Council of Fernandez Anderson. Council Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. President, this is uh, out of context, I realize. Um, I wonder if you uh, allow us to take a break to go downstairs and say hello and come back. For Lunar New Year? Yes, for Lunar New Year. Um, At some point. I'm going to try to get th through this committee, through this meeting as quick as I can. Um, and so we do have an opportunity to get down there. So hopefully we're not here much longer, but I know that's how a plan is to get down there. Okay. Uh, thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Um, okay, Mr. Clerk, we're on to 0339, please. Document number 0339, Council Flynn offered the following order for a hearing to review the Boston City Council rules. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. This is a refile, so we're all familiar with the City Council rules. Docket 0339 will refer to the Committee on Rules Administration. Mr. Clerk, can you please, well, um, would anyone like to speak on this matter or would, will anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council of Royal, Council of Block, Council of Braden, Council of Coletta, Council of Fernandez Anderson, Council of Flaherty, Council of Alara, Council of Louis Jen, Council of Mejia, Council of Murphy, Council of Worrell. This docket 0339 will be referred to the rules and administration. Docket 0340. Mr. Clerk. Docket number 0340. Council of Lara for the following. Order for a hearing to discuss the rise in public consumer energy costs. Thank you. The chair recognizes Council Alara. Council Alara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. Um, electric and gas prices have significantly increased this winter in the city of Boston, with National Grid estimating that the cost of power bills are going to rise nearly 60%. In the last year, Boston households paid 75% higher than national average cost of electricity. And for the last five Octobers, we've exceeded the national average by at least 48%. We have here in the city of Boston two programs that help us mitigate energy costs for our residents. And they are the Boston Community Choice Electricity Program, which is a municipal aggregation program that ultimately allows the city of Boston to secure electricity at a competitive rate by using our city's collective buying power and Mass Save, which is a really innovative program, I think. And all Massachusetts residents who pay their utility bills are ultimately, they're charged an energy efficiency fee on their monthly statement, and it goes in to support the Mass Save program. So I'm filing this hearing order because although we have options for our constituents, there are two challenges that we're running up against right now. For Mass Saves, most people don't know that they pay into this program and they have access to its benefits, whether they're renters or homeowners. And for CCE, the issue is a little bit more complicated. Um, but for most residents here in the city of Boston, they're automatically enrolled. But a big chunk of our residents are registered with third-party energy suppliers. Now, third-party energy suppliers are problematic because they are use aggressive misleading tactics especially in black and brown communities to get people to sign up for services that are ultimately um, more costly in the long run to them unsurprisingly the highest enrollment rates for third-party energy providers are in neighborhoods like roxbury dorchester in mattapan 
in my district, we have some of the lowest enrollment rates, and it's still at 28%, if that helps anybody else illustrate the scale of the problem here. So with the rate of inflation and rising food and living costs, I don't think that we can afford to let our most vulnerable communities take another hit. So I'm really urging my colleagues, especially those who represent these communities and these neighborhoods to join this hearing so we can learn how to best partner with the administration to get the word out. Uh, what ultimately needs to happen is that people who use third party energy suppliers have to one, leave the third party energy supplier, but they also have to call personally to be switched out and to give them permission to be switched into the CCE program here in Boston. So Roxbury, Mattapan, Dorchester, High Park, these neighborhoods see sometimes almost half, um, 40 to 50 percent of enrollment in these programs, and they're basically missing out on the savings of the Boston CCE, and most communities also don't know about the Mass Saves program. So I collaborated with the administration. I was hoping that this could be a meeting, but because I wanted all of my council colleagues to be present, we opted for having a hearing order so that everybody could be here and we would be following open meeting law. Uh, so I just hope that all of my colleagues will join us so we can talk about how best to get the word out and get people off these third um, party energy providers. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lara. Would anyone like to speak on this matter? The chair recognizes Council Braden. Council Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I really applaud uh, my colleague, Councillor Lara, for um, bringing this issue up. Um, I did, a few years ago, co-sponsor a hearing with uh, Councillor Janey on this matter. Uh, I really, the third party energy supply, so-called suppliers are predatory and using misleading practices to um, attract uh, our elders and uh, people from uh, in families who English is not their first language. Uh, selling them a bill of goods, basically, and I know that the Attorney General's office has looked into this. Uh, so I look forward to this conversation, and I really do hope that we can make it uh, an illegal practice to be misleading uh, our most vulnerable residents, especially in relation to energy costs, because this is a life and it can be a life and death situation in the winter. Thank you. Thank you, Council Braden. Would anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council Arroyo, Council Baker, Council Bach, Council Braden, Council Corda, Council Fernandez Anderson, Council Flaherty, Council Louis Jean, Council Mejia, Council Murphy, Council Rural, please add the chair. This docket 0340 referred to the Committee on City Services, Innovation Technology. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0341? Docket number 0341, Councilor Murphy offered the following order for a hearing to discuss the payroll concerns of many of our Boston public school teachers who are owed back pay. Thank you. The chair recognizes Council Murphy. Council Murphy, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President Flynn. So as we all know, it's our fiduciary duty to make sure that our city employees are paid, especially in a timely fashion. That is the reason why I filed this hearing order. The Boston City Council meeting back on Wednesday, October 19th, we unanimously voted to pass dockets 1244 and docket 1245 and approve the appropriations for the three-year Boston Teachers Union contract. Boston Public School teachers were working without a contract since September 1st, 2021, and the new contract that was ratified by the BTU later covers the period from September 1st, 2021 through August 31st, 2024. The contract includes pay increases at the minimum of 9.5% over three years that include retroactively paying teachers back to the September 1st date. The City of Boston owes close to 9,000 current and former BTU members more than $16 million in back pay. And as of today, these payments have not been made to our teachers. If in any way we can use this body to ensure our BTU members receive their owed pay, as we know for work already rendered, that um, I hope that we can hold a hearing order and support this work going forward. So thank you very much, Council President Flynn. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in this matter? The chair recognizes Council Louis Jen. Council Louis Jen, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. I'd just like to say that. Um, Teachers should be getting paid. Our city workers should all be getting paid, especially with how hard it is to 
live. And so our, our office has been talking to the administration about this, and they are aware of our concerns, and we've been talking to BTU. And it's our understanding that there's progress being made to finding a res resolution here. So I would just want to give a shout out to the BTU uh, for all of the work that they've been doing with the administration in helping to resolve this in an amicable manner. So just want to shout out again to our teachers who deserve to get paid in the administration, who I know is working really hard to resolve this issue alongside the BTU. Thank you. Thank you, Council Ujian. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Council Bakhat, here is it? First, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to my colleague for filing. I just want to echo Council Louise Jen's um, statements and just reaffirm that our office has also been in communication with the administration and, and working alongside the BTU to help resolve this matter as quickly as possible. And I'm really looking forward to some resolution. Um, in fact, I spoke with um, the president of the BTU just yesterday. We communicated and. Um, uh, we are looking forward to a swift resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Council Mejia. The chair recognizes Council Bach. Council Bach, you have the floor. Thank you so much, um, Mr. President. I just wanted to thank Council Murphy for filing. I think, um, I think everybody is doing their best here, um, but I think, you know, for me, uh, as the chair who moves forward these collective bargaining um, matters, I'm frequently doing it as quickly as I possibly can, knowing that people have been waiting on back pay. So obviously, I think, you know, we all count on the systems then actually paying people out their back pay. Um, and I will say that I had actually been hearing, and I think it's been reported in the papers, but from friends who are teachers, even separate from the back pay, people who are just not receiving their regular um, money through payroll in the fall, um, and just with numbers way off. And I think it's really, you know, it's wreaked havoc with people's personal finances. Um, and. I just think, you know, we would say to any large employer, when you're forcing your worker to carry this, it's basically like a loan, a zero interest loan that you're taking out from your worker when they have to like, you know, wait for their money. And I just want to make sure that the city of Boston is, you know, obviously our teachers are half of our workforce, um, but across all of our workforce platforms, payroll can be very complicated. Quite often you're dealing with legacy systems. Um, it can be really hard to like update the numbers. I'm super sympathetic to that, but I think everything we can be doing to make sure that we're both solving this problem and looking ahead to make sure that we're not confronted with this problem in any of our other agencies, is, it's important to me as the Chair of City Services. So thank you, Mr. President. Please add my name. Yep, thank you, Council Buck. Um, the Chair recognizes Council fernandez Anderson. Council fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to rise in support as well uh, my office have heard from educators, librarians, and students. Um, apparently, students are owed money too. So there are sometimes um, events uh, such as or proms or field trips mm -hmm. where they didn't take place because of COVID, but it's thousands of, and thousands of dollars owed to these students um, to report. So I'm not going to name out schools. I look forward to working with um, Councilor Braden and as well uh, the chair of uh, education, Councilor Mejia to look at uh, ways that we can resolve these issues. Thank you. Thank you for filing. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Would anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council Arroyo, Council Baker, Council Barr, Council Braden, Council Clara, Council Fernandez Anderson, Council Flaherty, Council Lara, Council Rall, please add the chair. This docket 0341 will be referred to the Committee on Government Accountability, Transparency, Accessibility. Mr. Clerk, please read, please read docket 0342. Docket number 0342, Council Lara and Baker offer the following. Order for a hearing to discuss the recovery and revitalization of the taxi industry. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Lara. Council Lara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. Um, and thank you to <coughs> Councillor Baker, my co-sponsor for the work that we've been doing, I think nine, 10 months now on this issue. Uh, the taxi industry in Boston is primarily made up of small business owners with 677 individuals owning just one to four medallions and 95% of them who come from immigrant backgrounds. As Uber and Lyft continue to corner the market, the continued sale of medallions without the necessary municipal support for these owners and operators has put 1,825 Boston cab drivers at an economic disadvantage and tied them to an investment that is likely to continue to lose strength. 
Last year, Councillor Baker and I began working with the Way Forward Taxi Alliance to find ways to support the taxi industry's recovery. And we're filing this hearing order today to get the ball rolling on having the conversations. Uh, and I'm excited to continue working with the local advocates to ensure that our taxi industry is not only thriving, but really providing a way forward for struggling immigrant families and prioritizing small businesses over large corporations. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lara. The Chair recognizes Council Baker. Council Baker, you have the floor. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. I'd first like to thank Council Lara for including me in on this order. Uh, it's my hope that the hearing order will help to examine the city's current ta taxi regulations and discuss a potential need to change how we regulate taxes in our taxis in our city. If cab owners and operators are able to receive some relief on their hackney regu regulations, considering there's an unlimited number of rideshare companies and drivers that continue to operate within our city without those regulations, we, we can do our part to save this industry. Without regulatory reform, driver, drivers, medallion owners, and their families will continue to face financial burden. There are small things we can do in the city to alleviate this burden. Um, the TNCs have been detrimental to the taxi industry in Boston, an in in industry that's been serving the public for over 100 years an industry that consists mainly of immigrants and it's time to level the playing, playing field. Ultimately, we need to ensure that we're being fair to all drivers in our growing city. Um, we had started the work on this when the, when the TNCs are just starting to, to happen. Basically, we allowed the city of Boston, allowed the taxi industry to get crushed. We're still dealing with Uber and Lyft and figuring out how we build our city around their business model. Now, their business model has been to hurt the drivers after they got rid of the taxis. They hurt the drivers in their pay, in their pocket right now. And the ultimate goal for them is to have no drivers, all automated. Um, there's the, the, the taxi industry, just to put it in perspective, before Uber and Lyft got here, a, a medallion could sell from anywhere to four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars which the people that own those and bought those leveraged their entire life, similar to what you do with a, with a home. You have to go in hawk for it. And we allowed the TNCs to put all those people out of business, small, small operators. Now we have hundreds, potentially thousands of medallions on the shelf that just sitting there waiting for people to use them. So now you can get a medallion for around 35,000. But there's also things that we could do that would support this. If you travel around a little bit, there's places like Vancouver, they banned Uber and Lyft. And that's like, oh, we all use Uber and Lyft. We can't ban them. But we should think about something that we can do to, to get them to level this playing field. Um, if, you, if you traveled in some European, European country, countries, I was in Ireland, every hotel has a phone you pick up and you order a taxi. Not an Uber and Lyft, a taxi, because that supports the local economy. Um, the, the, the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce, Jim Rooney, a friend of ours, has started talking about congestion pricing. I thought when the legislation was happening where we leveraged um, monies that would come off the people that were, that were coming in, in in their cars, this might be a potential way for us to, to, to do some congestion pricing on Uber and Lyft, a dollar or two dollars, when they come into the city from Rhode Island or New Hampshire, wherever else they come from, rented different cars, why can't we get a dollar per car that's in here? We talk about traffic congestion, how many cars are here just going around the block picking people up? So those are some of the things that I look forward to, to talking about and maybe helping this industry, maybe helping these families that, that this is what they did. Um, and going back and it was Councilor, um, she's the AG now, thank you, Andrea Campbell and I worked mm -hmm. on it quite a bit. And it's, it's hard when you see People that are, that are head of the household, and that's what they do for a living, crying to you because they think that the city didn't help them, and they think rightly that the city didn't help them because the city did nothing for this industry right here. Now maybe we can do something for this industry and build it back up with support. So um, one of the things, one of the questions, I'm just going to throw it out there is, what happened to the money that the city got from the state legislation, we got, I don't know what it is, millions of dollars, and it was supposed to be for an app, and it was supposed to be for retraining, it was supposed to be to help the small business owners. That's the first question that I'd like to ask uh, uh, of the 
of the city. What happened to that money? What are we doing with it? Did we train anybody? Did we get any app? Did we do anything? Thank you, Mr. President. And again, thank you to my colleague from District 6. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Would anyone else like to speak on this? The chair recognizes Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Please add my name. Uh, my grandfather drove a taxi, as did my dad and a couple of his brothers, uh, all to support uh, the family. There were 10 of them. And uh, so I full, wholeheartedly support revitalization of the taxi industry through uh, the chair to the makers that they could consider um, bringing in, I think at one point the steel workers union had represented mm -hmm. taxi drivers, maybe more appropriate if that's been disbanded. The teamsters probably are in the best position, frankly, and as a former teamster, I'm, I'm speaking, I guess somewhat biased, but uh, just given the strength of uh, the teamster organization plus what they do in terms of uh, common carriers and truck drivers and requiring CDLs and training and all that stuff. So, but again, if the steel workers still have, um, you know, their, their foot in the door, then through the chair, just ask that uh, they be invited to have a seat at the table, as well as the taxi dispatchers, which sometimes sort of run a little independent. Uh, so anyone that has a medallion and or has a uh, series of medallions, they're working through a dispatch group or organization. They actually also may be re represented by unions, or at least at one point they did. So again, just food for thought, but again, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, time has come to at least um, try to revitalize this. Uh, they've been decimated. The value of the medallions have been decimated through to ride share companies, and it's a great industry. And unfortunately, you see uh, there's certain sections of our city where there's, uh, you see the taxi stands that at one, one point, um, you know, uh, in recent days, you know, would have five, six, seven, ten taxis all queued up, ready to, to, to work. And now we've got just this whole abandoned space, which I can probably could be converted to to meters, frankly, to, to accommodate uh, more uh, parking. But that said, if we have all of these taxi stands, but yet we don't have taxis or we don't have an industry that's that's burgeoning, then we need to do our best to do that. So I wholeheartedly support it and look forward to an expedited hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Flaherty. The Chair recognizes Council Bach. Council Bach, you have the floor. Thank you, Councillor Flynn, and I want to thank Councillors Lara and Baker for filing this. Um, I think in relation to what Councillor Flaherty was just mentioning, I, I think it's ironic that in many ways, as Uber and Lyft continue to develop, um, we're reinventing the taxi industry. So for example, in my district around Fenway Park, we've had to create designated pickup spots. They're basically reinventing the taxi stand, right? Because in fact, we know that it's quite unsafe to have cars picking up and dropping off at any point in the curb. Um, and I think, you know, as we worry about Vision Zero and how we have a safe city from a driving perspective, a lot of the regulations that have dropped away on the rideshare side um, have had real, um, they've had a real contributing factor for pedestrian um, safety concerns. And so I think that, you know, makes this an issue that we should be looking at. But also just fundamentally, I agree with Councillor Baker that um, government kind of betrayed the taxi drivers here because we said this is a regulated space that you have to pay to enter. And then we said, psych, never mind. Um, and, and I think that is something where it's, it's actually quite different from just some other industry that existed independently of government. And the question is, like, should we be bailing them out or something? This is an industry where we controlled the pool and then, uh, and then we kind of changed the rules on them midstream. Um, so, you know, I do think that it's really important. I think lots of folks know that there, were, there was major kind of um, a Globe Spotlight review of some of the big medallion owners who had a lot of them and were exploiting their drivers. Um, and so I think that, you know, as we think about remedies, making a distinction between those kind mm -hmm. of those family smaller medallion operators and some of these big actors is important. Um, but I definitely uh, I think there's and, and I just think that, like, it's it's kind of a tragedy that um, <coughs> in something that is so well suited to a cooperative and something where the worker actually like owns the capital, right? The car that is um, the like kind of means of carrying out this work that we've allowed an industry to move in that doesn't bring any of that capital to bear and then yet pays workers, you know, increasingly poverty wages. Um, and as Councillor Baker said, with the objective of eventually eliminating them from the equation. So I don't think we should give up on reforming this space and I'm glad that our colleagues are drawing attention to it. Thank you. Please add my name. Thank you, Council Block. The chair recognizes Council Coletta. Council Coletta, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. I don't want to belabor the point. Um, I do want to add my name to this and just call out the fact that East Boston deals with a lot of the emissions from cars coming to the airport and taxis have a lot to do with this as well. So thinking about our mobility goals and also our climate goals, there was a lot of work done to regulate um, Ubers and Lyfts. 
And so I don't want to lose Massport in this conversation, bringing them to the table, figuring out what we can do just to make sure that we are moving towards our, our carbon emission goals uh, in 2050. So thank you. Let, let me just add um, before, does anyone else want to speak? Come. Council of Just through the chair, just one footnote to the sponsors is a, a, a former councillor, my former colleague, City Council Paul Scapicchio, was actually a taxi driver. We've had hearings in the past. He was a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he was just here last week. So uh, to the lead sponsors, may uh, behoove you to reach out to Councillor Scapicchio. Again, he served as a taxi driver. His family, I believe, has been in the taxi industry. And he was invaluable when we were sitting down with the Hackney Division, administration officials, etc., in terms of the intricacies of the taxi industry. Thank you, Mr. President. Th thank you, Council Flaherty. Um, and then through the, through the maker, through to Council Lara and to Council Baker, Council Flaherty mentioned uh, three things. The recent comment about former Councilor Scapicchio, but also the dispatches being included in it and also what role um, um, labor might play in it. So just something something to think about. The, the chair recognizes Council Lara. Council Lara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. I just wanted to make a quick point to Councilor Coletta's um, comment that working with the Way Forward Taxi Alliance, one of, we, we've been basically exploring a list of interventions, and one of the interventions that the taxi drivers are actually looking for is for the city to create a grant program that would help them subsidize purchasing electric vehicles and electrifying the taxi fleet. So we're definitely keeping street safety, emissions, and all, you know, I, I think all of the unintended consequences that we often see um, with an increase in cars and emissions in the city in mind. So we're definitely looking into it. Thank you, Councilor. I, I just wanted to add the taxi, the, the taxis have always been under the Hackney Division, as, as both of you, as we all know, under the Boston Police. It is my understanding that Uber and Lyft are not under um, the Boston Police. Something, something to think about. Also, just want to say thank you to Councilor Lara and to Councilor Baker as well for working on this issue. Br you know, we may not agree all the time on issues, but let's focus on the issues that we do agree on. But Council Lara and Council Baker, thank you for helping to bring this body together as well. Um, Mr. Clerk, can you, oh, would anyone else like to speak or add their name? Mr. Clerk, please add Council Royal, Council Block, Council Braden, Council Cleta, Council Fernandez Anderson, Council Flaherty, Council Eugene, Council Mejia, Council Worrell, please add the chair. This docket 0342 will refer to the Committee on Planning, Development, and Transportation. Mr. Clerk, we're on docket 0343, please. Docket number 0343, Councilor Fernandez, Anderson, and Lara offer the following order for a hearing regarding calling for a moratorium on all development on all city owned land in District 7 prior to the request for a proposal process. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councilor Fernandez Anderson. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, I just wanted to address a clerical error. Can you, uh, can we suspend the rules and add Councilor Lara as an original co-sponsor, uh, not Councilor Lujan? Councilor Lara is added as, as an original co-sponsor. So Councilor yeah, Lujan is not an original co-sponsor. Okay, Councilor Lara is added. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, this yeah. is a refile, and I think that it's important that I, I will speak a little bit uh, longer than I intended to, but just to clarify specifically what uh, this hearing order is intended to do. Um, last year, <laughs> or a few months ago, uh, when I spoke on this, we talked about a moratorium that the people of District 7 were uh, just tired of uh, decades of unsatisfying development policies that have marginalized them from letters of uh, levers of decision making. And our district, uh, specifically District 7, is predominantly black and brown and working class district that has seen the political and econ economic elites um, sidelined from positions of power. Um, and I'll just um, speak from the heart here because considering that today is the first day of Black History Month, and um, I, I have some announcements about that as well. But um, it, it does seem as though, and, and I went through the statistics, right? We talked about how D7, particularly in Roxbury, 
have uh, been inundated with low-income rentals. In fact, 54% of all um, the housing units in Roxbury are income restricted compared to 19.2 for the city as a whole. Um, that is astounding. I um, hope you can agree that it means that there are nearly three times the percentage of income restricted rentals in Roxbury um, than there is in the, the rest of Boston, which begs the question, uh, where then should the low income housing go? Um, I suggest that it goes in the other areas that only share 6% of Back Bay housing is low, is income restricted. 6% of Bay Village income restricted. Beacon Hill, 6%. North End, 6%. Hyde Park, 7%. South Boston Waterfront, 8%. Um, and then when you compare that, 75% of Roxbury's residents are renters, and then 48% of those are income rentals, um, so low income rentals. So poverty essentially is concentrated in, in Roxbury. And what I'm suggesting is that, so I believe in development, and I think that as a thriving city, we should, we have to continue to develop. To thrive as a city, we have to continue to develop. What I'm saying is that you can't necessarily speed up a process that's with failed policies. If it's broken, and if you're speeding it up, then how do you do that in a faster time? So let's say that this miracle will happen with um, the mayor's uh, new proposal to move the land to MOH. That's wonderful. I want to partner with uh, MOH, I want to partner with the administration, but I want to have conversations about how are we creating protocols that actually include uh, people in the community in the RFP process, but how are we writing these RFP process prior to them being allocated out um, or designated out to black and brown developers. So in District 7, the advisory council that I mentioned, the civic leaders that I um, have partnered with, we've done a study, a master plan study for Roxbury, and in particular, we've looked at the inventory that the mayor has provided. We've also created a coalition of black and brown developers. We have uh, people that are ready and um, able, willing and able to develop in Roxbury. So if, if this uh, PAC or um, uh, planning, uh, advisory council in MOH is only going to include the employees in the city, I welcome the conversation with the administration to talk about how is that, how are we partnering with community members in order for us to truly be inclusive and transparent. Um, that's one point. The other point is that we know as black people in Roxbury, uh, black and brown people in Roxbury, we know what's good for us. We understand, we don't want uh, gentrification, or, or should I say, um, gentrifying architecture to come through Roxbury just to build pathways so that people can come and travel to their jobs, to their nonprofits, to save the black and brown baby. We want to be able to be inclusive in those processes, but we also want to create economic integration. In order to do that, we have to actually be honest and intentional within the processes that actually designate these lands. And again, the excuse is not that there aren't enough black and brown developers. We have that list, we have that coalition, we have that partnership, we've done the study, we have a master plan, we have design and renderings ready to go. And um, I just wanted to shout out uh, Chief Dillon because she has been open and collaborative in working with us, with our office, and moving forward with the rent to own project. Um, as a pilot in Roxbury, but there's so much more. Roxbury doesn't have a theater. Roxbury doesn't have places or a club or a place where you can actually decompress. Where, again, do black and brown gay boys go in Roxbury? Nowhere, underground, unsafe. Where do we go after work? Can we just have green spaces? Can we have game parks for our youth? Can we have, I don't know, a disability youth center? a senior recreational center. There are so many uh, possibilities. We've talked about clinics that we need in Roxbury, and we don't have that. Our quality of life is low. In the spirit of Black History Month, I know that all of you agree with me that we all want to work together on this. In spite of our disagreements or not disagreements, I would like to work with everyone here, my colleague um, Frank Baker, Braden, Coletta, all of you, because I know that we're on the same page when it comes to equity. The politics thing is difficult, and you get a lot of pressure. We, but you wouldn't have been here 
if at least 75% of your intentions was heart, right? Was because you cared. And I, I am learning and understanding that and look forward to our collaboration because the black and brown people, the disenfranchised or the working class in Roxbury needs you. So I look for your allyship, I look for your support in this. Um, Yes, it is called a moratorium, but again, it's a process to have a conversation about how to do it better and how to truly create racial equity in Roxbury. I thank you, um, Mr. Pre Mr. President. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Would anyone like to speak on this matter or add your name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Kirk, can you please add Councilor Baker, Councilor Braden, Councilor Coletta, Councilor Louis Jean. Councilor Mejia, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Worrell, please add the chair. This docket 0343 will be referred to the Committee on Planning, Development, Transportation. Um, Mr. Clerk, before we go on to docket 0344, um, I'd like to recognize Councilor Fernandez Anderson. We are celebrating um, Black History Month, and may maybe this is a great opportunity for you to. Um, give an update on what the City Council will be doing. Councilor Fernandez Anderson. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so uh, my beautiful uh, new policy director uh, who's joined us, her name is Lindsay, um, and Councilor Jean, correct me if I'm mispronouncing this, um, Diodon? Diodonne. Um, so literally like, God give me or bless me, it's a beautiful name. Um, so she's actually, she has this um, new, um, I guess, uh, trend, I don't know, pra practice to write beautiful um, quotes and they take turns in the office. I'm not very much like the, the um, kumbaya type of person, but I appreciate it and I just wanted to shout her out because she wrote today, blackity black for all of 365 days, but the next 27 days are even blacker. So I uh, thought that was dope and thought I would shout her out, but as far as Black History Month, I want to um, first recognize all of the uh, counselor colleagues that have paved the way for us to be here who have actually done tremendous work. And I can't imagine, um, I mean, if the most that I have to do is work with my colleagues, like this, this is easy compared to what they have to go, go through. Today, we are progressives and we, our ideologies align more than before, I would say. Um, so I'm excited to look at Black History Month. And typically, I would say, oh, you can't talk about you know, Black History Month without connecting it to transatlantic slave trade or talking about Cape Verde, the port of where it all happened. But today, I want to say that is not Black History Month. That is not black history for African-Americans. Um, I want to acknowledge all of the African-American people who have paved the way for black Africans like myself, black people, black immigrants to come into this country, to have, um, to have created such a wonderful, such a beautiful culture. And I often connect that to the Irish culture because I see a lot of Irish people, like I heard you just now, uh, Councillor Flaherty talk about Yep, mm-hmm, yep. And I'm like, wait, that sounds like, um, I know that's right. That sounds like the different cultures that we hear about. But I want, to I want to, for us to look at how integrated and how uh, connected we are with uh, African American um, History Month. And when you look at that, when you look at how the African American people tremendously, I mean, just magically how they have endured and persevered, um, how resilient they are in creating spaces for people, how loving and open and welcoming they've been to be able to connect with people and forgiving they've been, no matter what, throughout the trials of their history. Um, I am simply humbled by that and I am grateful to be able to take advantage of this and be able to be in this space um, and to collaborate with everyone. So I want my black and white counselors and Latino and Afro-Latino and everybody else to get together with me for us to create a wonderful and beautiful celebration um, for, we're looking at the date for uh, February 15th and we hope to do it uh, downstairs and we hope to do it in the evening so that families can actually attend. I hope that every single one of you will save the date. Um, 
and I'll reserve my time because we got to get to the Lunar New Year celebration. Um, but please, I look forward to your ideas. I look forward to uh, you uh, submitting uh, folks that we want to perform and foods and vendors and everybody else. Thank you so much and um, happy Black History Month. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Um, Mr. Quirk, we're on true docket 043. I'm sorry. Mr. Quirk, we're on to docket 0344. Docket number 0344, Councilor Flynn offered the following. Resolution in support of the economic census and to promote response rates in the city of Boston. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Mr. Ch uh, the chair recognizes Councilor Flynn. Councilor Flynn, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Braden. Uh, Councilor Braden, this is a resolution in support of the economic census, which is conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau every five years. Um, it's a measure of American business in the economy. It provides industry stats about the national, state, and local governments, including, including Boston. The data from this economic census, um, again, it's every five years, provides the foundation for other key measures of economic performances. Um, data from the census is used by Boston businesses, policymakers, community organizations for economic development, business forecasting, strategic planning. The, the, the mailing will take place, the main mailing of the 2022 economic census will begin on January 31st, 2023, with responses due March 15th. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this forward is the Census Bureau reached out to me and they wanted to ask for our support promoting the economic census so that we can make sure that our business owners know about this so that we can get a good response rate. Um, a similar resolution was also passed in, in Chicago uh, to, prom to promote this. So I hope that we can suspend and adopt this resolution today. Um, thank you, Council Braden. Thank you, Councillor uh, President Flynn. Is anyone else looking to speak on this matter? Would anyone? Uh, oh, you speak. Sorry. Um, I would also like to, you know, thank you for this resolution, Councillor uh, Flynn. Uh, I know that the uh, the Census Bureau has an interest in really get maximising the participation, as we found out in our previous in this in this bicentennial, the centennial. Not Bicentennial, not every 200 years. <laughs> in the census in 2020, we had a serious challenge with regard to um, getting an accurate count. So I'm hoping that we can bring all our resources to bear and make sure we get a good uh, good census uh, in this instance. Uh, is anyone else li uh, like to add their name? Councillor Royal, Councillor Baker, Councillor Bach, Councillor Coletta. Councillor Flaherty, Councillor Lara, Councillor Louis Jean, Councillor Mejia, Councillor Murphy, Councillor Worrell, and please add my name. Councillor Flynn seeks suspension of the rules and ado ad adoption of docket 0344. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed say nay. The ayes have it. This docket has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braden. Mr. Cora, can you please read docket 0345, please? Docket number 0345, Councillor Lara and Flynn offer the following. Resolution designated a, designating a Memorial Hero Square at the intersection of Glen Road and Forest Hill Street in Jamaica Plain in memory of Paul Xavier Hogan. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Councillor Lara. Councillor Lara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. I'd like to suspend the rules and add Councillor Fernandez Anderson as a third original co sponsor. Hearing no objection, Council Fernandez Anderson is added as the third uh, co sponsor. Thank you. Um, so last week I learned of JP Bourne resident sacrifice for this country nearly 80 years ago. Sergeant Paul Xavier Hogan was only 24 when he lost his life fighting for his country in World War II. 
and I'm incredibly humbled to be working with Veteran Affairs, my fellow co-sponsors, President Flynn and Councilor Fernandez Anderson, and Sergeant Hogan's family, to really work to honor his sacrifice for this nation against one of the biggest threats that it's ever faced. A memorial hero square, I think, is a small gesture for such an immense sacrifice, so I look forward to um, passing this resolution today. Thank you. Th thank you, Council Lara. Would anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Cork, please add Councilor Arroyo, Councilor Baker, Councilor Bach, Councilor Braden, Councilor Flaherty, Councilor Lejeune, Councilor Mejia, Councilor Murphy, Councilor Rell. Please add, well, I'm, I'm already part of it. Yeah. Um, I also want to say thank you to Council Lara for bringing this forward. Honored to partner with her on this. And also want to recognize the incredible work that Commissioner Santiago and his team does at the City of Boston Veterans Services as well. City Councilor Lara and Flynn and Councilor Fernandez Anderson seek suspension of the rules and adoption of docket 0345. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The docket has been adopted. Mr. Clerk, can you please read docket 0346? Docket number 0346. Councilors Lara and Mejia offer the following resolution recognizing February 27, 2023 as Dominican Independence Day. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Alara. Council Alara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. I'm really excited to be sponsoring this resolution uh, recognizing February 27th as Dominican Independence Day. Um, I want to suspend the rules and add Councilor Fernandez Anderson as one of the original co-sponsors as well. Hearing no objection, Council Fernandez Anderson is added that she recognizes Council Lara. Thank you, President Flynn. So, you know, it's always the right time for me at least to celebrate the history and the impact of the Dominican community, not only here in Boston, but globally. Um, and today I started my day on the phone with every single one of my family members because on the coast of the city that I'm from, they experienced a 5.5 um, strength earthquake this morning. So at 6 a.m. this morning, I called my little brother and all of my cousins and all of my aunts to really check in on them and see how they were doing. And my little brother said he thought the apartment was gonna fall on his head um, because it's the first time in his life at least that he's experienced something like that. So I tell that story because as I'm on the phone today, remembering that I'm gonna file this resolution, I was really reminded of the joy and resiliency of the Dominican community. And I think that we see that here in Boston. We see it with all that they give, not only in their neighborhoods, but as small business owners, as our teachers, as our child care providers. And so I'm really excited that we get to this year raise the flag of the Dominican Republic and celebrate the history and all of the accomplishments of my people. I want to take a moment to honor my mom and my dad who are both immigrants um, from the Dominican Republic and were the first, both the first in their families to come here because they wanted to give me and my siblings a better chance at a better life. And I would say that they succeeded in that, uh, but that is the story of so many other Dominican families here. And so I'm really grateful that as an elected official, I get to celebrate um, my people and our history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lara. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to my lead sponsor. I am so incredibly excited uh, to uh, speak on behalf of this resolution. I always like to say I may have been the first Dominican, but I'm so happy that I'm not the last. Um, first there was one, and now there's some. And so really excited to have uh, a sister in the space uh, really uplifting the work. I, too, am an immigrant. I came, actually, I was born in the Dominican Republic and came here when I was five years old. And I often talk about the fact that my mom was here and was uh, undocumented for a period of time. And you know, when we, when we come here to this country, we, we leave everything that we love behind. Um, and oftentimes, we end up uh, wondering whether or not it was all worth it, uh, uh, because sometimes the way we're treated. Um, but as Councilor Lada says, we are a resilient people and a joyful um, and, and a joyful spirit um, continues to guide me in this in this work. I will say that Dominicans have a politics in their blood. Uh, this past weekend, I uh, participated in the uh, election process to nominate the folks who are going to do the Dominican festival 
and I realized that uh, Dominicans are take every election really serious because I had to play referee. And so um, it's not just uh, in terms of celebrating Independence Day, but I, I'm really looking forward to uh, this year's um, Dominican Festival and, and seeing the hard work of, of our people displayed out in these streets. So, um, so thank you. And that's it. Thank you, Council Mejia. The chair recognizes Councilor Fernandez Anderson. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Thank you um, so much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Lara and Councilor Mejia for including me. Um, I almost jumped out of my seat. I don't know if you guys saw that when um, you said my name. I was, I'm really grateful that you added me because um, just in case you guys don't know, Dominicans taught me Spanish. Um, first it would be Puerto Ricans and they'd tell me, say it this way, and I'd say, um, vente pa' acá, and then Dominicans like, no, ven aquí, and then it was all confusing until finally I got it uh, with the proper Spanish. But um, quería decirlo todos en español que um, feliz um, día de independencia y muchísimas gracias por tu contribución aquí en esta Unidos y mi comunidad en el Distrito 7. Estoy aquí para presentarlas. Si cualquier cosa que necesitan, estoy aquí para también para celebrar con ustedes y um, viva la independencia de Dominicano. Gracias. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Would anyone like to add their name? Please raise your hand. Mr. Clerk, please add Council Arroyo, Council Baker, Council Barr, Council Braden, Council Coletta, Council Flaherty, Council Eugene, Council Murphy. Council Rell, please add the chair. Councilors Lara, Mejia, and uh, Council Fernandez Anderson seek suspension of the rules and adoption of docket 0346. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The docket has been adopted. We're on to personnel orders. Mr. Cook, please read docket 0347. Docket number 0347, Council Flynn for Council O'Reilly. The Chair seeks suspension of the rules and passage of Docket 0367. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The docket is passed. Mr. Clerk, we're on to lay files. I'm informed by the Clerk that there are six. Six lay file matters. The additional lay file matters include four appropriation orders from the Mayor on collective bargaining issues. 217F responses from the mayor's office. These late file matters should be on everyone's desk. Um, can you raise your hand if they're not on your desk and we can take a minute to make sure that we do get them for you? Okay. We will take a vote to add these late file matters into the agenda. All those in fa favor of adding the late file matters into the agenda say aye. Thank you, the late file matters have been added to the agenda. Mr. Clerk, can you please read the first four late, my, late file matters together into the record. First late file matter from the Office of the Mayor. Dear Councilors, I transmit here with, with you for your approval in order to reduce fiscal year 23 appropriation for the reserve for collective bargaining by $164,448 to provide funding for the Boston Public Schools for fiscal year 23 increases contained within the collective bargaining agreements between the Boston Public Schools and the New England Police Belevenant Association, Local 160 Boston School Police Patrolmen's Association. I respectfully request your favorable action on this important matter. Late file number two from the Office of the Mayor. Dear Council, as I transmit herewith a supplemental appropriation order for the Boston Public School Department for fiscal year 23 in the amount of $164,448 to cover the fiscal year 23 cost items contained within the collective bargaining agreements between the Boston Public Schools and the New England Police Belevolent Association, Local 160 Boston School Police Patrolmen's Association. The terms of the contracts are September 1, 2020 through August 31, 2024. The major provisions of the contracts include base wage increases of 2%, 2.5%, 2.5%, and 2.5% to be given in each, to be given in October of each fiscal year of the contract term. Late file number three from the Office of the Mayor. Dear Council, as I transmit with, herewith a supplemental appropriation order 
for the Boston Public Schools Department in fiscal year 23 in the amount of $1,283,486 to provide funding for the Boston Public Schools as a fiscal 23 appropriation order to reduce to be reduced from the reserve for collective bargaining. The fiscal, 20, fiscal year 23 increases contained within the collective bargaining agreements between Boston Public Schools and Local Union 1952, Painters and Allied Trades, District Council Number 35, Custodians. I respectfully request your favorable action on this important matter. Late file number three from the Office of the Mayor. Dear Council, as I transmit herewith with a supplemental appropriation order for the Boston Public Schools Department fiscal year 23 in the amount of $1,284,486 to cover the fiscal year 23 cost items contained within the collective bargaining agreements between the Boston Public Schools and the local union number 1952, Painters and Allied Trades, District Council number 35, Custodians. The terms of the contracts are September 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2026. The major provisions of the contracts include base wage increase of 2% in September 2020, and then a base wage increase of 2.5% to be given in September of 2022, 2023, and 2024, and then a base wage of 2% to be given in September of 2024 and 2025. As originally presented to you, this fiscal year 23 budget request include a reserve for collective bargaining, a separate appropriation to fund this collective bargaining increases. A separate order has been filed. And this was the doc, uh, late file number four. Thank you, Mr. Clark. These, late, these four late file matters will be referred to the Committee on City Services, Innovation, Technology. Mr. Cork, can you please read the fifth and the sixth late file matters into the record? From the Office of the Mayor, Dick Councilors, in response to a 17F request filed by your honorable body on January 9th, 2023, uh, relative to a grant for IDEA grant set aside for private school special education. And Late file number six from the Office of the Mayor, dear City Council, is a request in response to a 17F request filed by your honorable body on January 9th, 2023, relative to special education for private school from school year 2019 to 2023. Thank you, Mr. Clark. These late file matters, the fifth and sixth, will be placed on file. We're on to green sheets. We're on to the consent agenda. I have been informed by the clerk that there is one addition to the consent agenda. The chair moves for adoption of the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. The consent agenda has been adopted. We're on to memorials. Today we're going to adjourn our meeting in memory of the following individuals. For Councillor Braden, Father John Cashman, Patricia Eileen Lally. For Council Flynn and Lujan, Sean Fowen. For Councillor Flynn and Councillor Flaherty, John Sullivan, United States Navy. For the entire City Council, Alice Wolf, who is the former mayor of the City of Cambridge. Tyree Nichols. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Before we conclude, I wanted to ask my colleagues if there's anyone they want to recognize that, is, that has passed away 
and uh, would like to give you the opportunity to talk about a loved one or a friend or a constituent. The chair recognizes Councillor Baker. Councillor Baker, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Under the consent agenda uh, 0349, there's a resolution declaring Morris Latour Winston the second day in Boston. Maurice was a kid that I had met in 15 when we had 15 feet of snow. He was walking up my street with the shovel over his shoulder, 22 years old. Um, and I started talking to him, we shoveled, he got paid, uh, and I said, do you want to keep working? And I kept him basically from February till he went back to South Carolina in work, just doing things around Savin Hill. People needed yard work, but it all started with shoveling. Um, Maurice was someone that impacted me, and when you hear people talk about a smile or the eyes lighting up, this was Maurice. He was, he was, he was a kind, special person. Um, in, in his short time in Boston, you know, I introduced him to, to some people. He ended up going back to South Carolina and getting involved in his in politics in his in his small town. Loved horses. He died in a in a motorcycle accident about I, I want to say it was six or eight months ago. But I, I just wanted to say his name. And, and the world is is less of a pr place without Maurice in it. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, give him his place. I still talk to the family a bit, so uh, again, just wanted to talk to about Maurice. And I don't see any more lights on. There's two long-term city employees that are retiring this week that I'd like to mention their names, if that's okay. Go ahead, Council Baker. Okay, thank yep. you, and thank you, everybody. Um, so one person is Joyce Judge. She's been she's been with the city for 28 years. Her year, her role was she oversaw a range of programming as a special events manager for the Mayor's Office of Cons Consumer Affairs and Licensing. Help, you know, probably thousands of people get through get through this process. Um, Joyce was a recipient of the 2022 Outstanding Boston Employee Shattuck Award, and Joyce, we miss. She today is her is her last day. And I just ran into someone out of the flagpole. Carla Lumley, who's at, who's at Human Resources, she had 37 years. I have 37 years, so when I came in, walked up from Don Bosco up, up Tremont Street, Carla was one of the first. She was, we were all young then. So she was someone that I befriended 37 years ago in the city. She's lucky enough to be signing off. Her last day is on Friday, I believe, and just wanted to make sure that we recognize that the people that make our city run Joyce Judge and, and, and Carla Lumley, thank them for their service. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Baker. And if anyone else would like to offer any in memory or any special announcements, please raise raise your hand. The, the chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. And although this young man was not a constituent or a city of Boston resident, he. Um, fell victim to the streets here in the city of Boston, in Mattapan. Um, this young man, uh, his name is Tyler Lawrence, and um, I believe it was on Sunday, um, we got word uh, that there was some activity happening in Mattapan and headed there um, to see how we could be supportive, and later found out that it was a young, uh, young man of 13 years old. I. Um, I just want to send my sincere condolences to his family um, in their time as, as they grieve this tragic loss. And, you know, my daughter is going to be 13 in a few weeks. And I can only imagine um, what it's like right now for the family. Thank you. Thank you, Council Mejia. A moment of silence, please. The chair moves that when the council adjourns today, we do so in memory of those individuals mentioned. We are now scheduled to meet again in the Ionella Chamber on Wednesday, February 8th at 12 noon. And before we adjourn, I want to say thank you to the clerk and the clerk staff. I want to say thank you to the city council central staff, to my colleagues and their staff, and we had an excellent meeting today. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 The council is adjourned. <clears throat>